Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about the top uh, alternatives to the Breitling Navitimer. And as you guys know, the Breitling Navitimer is a very classic piece and it, it was very hard to find pieces that looked similar uh, that didn't totally rip off the style of the Breitling Navitimer because honestly I think the Breitling Navitimer is a one of a kind. But I'm going to jump right on into this video so you're not here for two hours. Uh, first up we have the Citizen Nighthawk which comes in at $200. Um, now this is more of an aviation themed piece which a lot of the pieces that I'm going to talk about here are aviation themed, uh, which doesn't exactly line up with the Breitling Navitimer, which is more nautical themed. Um, but what I was really looking for with these alternatives were watches that had the slide rule capability uh, of the Navitimer um, and hopefully had a chronograph too. But obviously, as you guys can see over here, the Citizen Nighthawk does not have a uh, chronograph. So I, I decided to add this one in here just to add a little bit more uh, variety to this video. If you guys saw my last video, I actually mentioned the Citizen AT8020, which is the uh, Blue Angels edition. That also has a slide rule and it does have a chronograph. So if you are more interested in that piece, uh, then oh, there will be a picture up here of that piece. Um, then you should definitely go check out my other video and um, you can definitely buy that one instead. So that kind of gets in the, the citizen <laughs> uh, for this alternative. So up next um, we have the Seiko SNA 411 uh, and 413. I think the 413, the, it, that's the blue and white version. I should have a picture up. Um, but that, I think, more closely resembles the blue and white version of the Breitling Navitimer, while the SNA 411, which is black and yellow, is kind of uh, a little bit far off from the Breitling Navitimer uh, in the black. So, uh, let me talk a little bit more about the SNA 411 and 413. They actually have the slide rule printed on the bezel. This is the only watch in this entire list that has that function or feature. Uh, and so basically what this allows you to do is it allows you to adjust the slide rule without having to screw out uh, a crown. And that's one of the notable features about the SNA 411 is that it's actually a dive watch and I think it has a water resist of, of 200 meters. So you don't have to worry about that extra crown to adjust the slide rule being open when you go out into the water, which is pretty interesting. Now, both the Citizen that I just talked about and this Seiko piece are quartz, which, you know, I wish they were automatic. Um, but again, if they were automatic, they would probably be, you know, in the, the $500 to $1,000 or even $2,000 price range. So it is nice to see those quartz movements in there to help keep the price down. And there really aren't very many cheap alternatives uh, to the Breitling Navitimer. I believe I said uh, the Citizen that I covered is $200 and this Seiko SNA 411 and 413 are also $200. Uh, the next cheapest watch on my list is an automatic piece, um, but it is a Japanese automatic piece. This is the Orient Explorer, and it comes in at $550. I think this is probably going to be a sweet spot for a lot of you watching this video, because whereas the other watches I covered are 42 or 43 millimeters in diameter, the Orient Explorer is 40 millimeters in diameter, so it is better for smaller wrists like mine. The downside about the Orient Explorer, though, is that it does not have a chronograph. Um, if it did have a chronograph, again, it would be much, much more expensive. Instead, Orient chose to opt for a power reserve at the 12 o'clock position. Uh, there will be pictures over here for you to reference. 
um, and a date wheel at the six o'clock position. Now, if you guys have been watching my videos for a long time, you'll know that I'm actually not a huge fan of date wheels. So honestly, like, I don't know, I think they added it in to try and mimic the look of a chronograph, which is kind of disappointing to me because um, it, you know, the watch is trying to be something that it really isn't. Uh, while I do think it offers a good amount of value uh, without it trying, without it having to pretend to be something else. So this again does have the slide rule built in to the actual um, case. So you will have to screw down, uh, unscrew a crown to adjust that slide rule. So up next, we actually, we're, we're moving right on up the price bracket really quickly because this next piece is an automatic piece. It's Swiss and it has a chronograph in addition to an actual slide rule. So for these reasons, it's very, very similar to the Breitling Navitimer. This is the Hamilton Khaki Aviation X Patrol. It's 42 millimeters and it comes in at $1,100. Wow. <laughs> Hamilton watches can get to be a little bit pricey. Uh, you know, Hamilton watches, in my opinion, aren't um, so cheap that you can kind of just blow the money uh, on a whim to buy them. Um, you know, $1,000 needs a little bit more uh, careful consideration than just, oh, this guy on YouTube was talking about it. I should definitely go buy it. Um, but definitely do your research. Totally a sidetrack. Let me get back to the actual watch. So this uh, does have a three subdial uh, chronograph and it does have a slide rule built into the case. So you are going to have to unscrew the, the crown. Uh, so again, you're not going to want to be diving with this watch. The, the pushers do not screw down for the chronograph. So that's a very easy way for water to enter into the watch. Uh, one of the cool things about this Hamilton Khaki uh, X Patrol here is that it has the ETA 7750 or the Valju 7750 movement, which is very beautiful. And the exhibition case back does have a very nice um, airplane rotor design on it, which is a definite, uh, definite positive uh, design decision that Hamilton made when making this watch. So we're done with the first page of, uh, <laughs> of alternatives and we're on to the last affordable alternative. Uh, the last watch was $1,100, that Hamilton was $1,100 and this Sin 903 ST is about $3,600 and this is the closest uh, watch that I could find uh, to the Breitling Navitimer. And while I was doing my research, I actually found out that Breitling, during financial difficulties, actually sold the design rights of the Navitimer to Sin, which is why this watch looks so familiar uh, and it looks so comparable to the Breitling Navitimer. And also because of this, it does attract a very similar price point. Uh, $3,600 is orders of magnitude higher than $1,100, which we, were, which we were looking at when we were talking about the Hamilton. So again, I actually couldn't really find uh, a lot of chronographs with slide rules that looked like the Breitling Navitimer that were between that thousand dollar and you know this four thousand dollar if we round up uh, watch. So this sin is very very nice. It is basically <laughs> exactly the same as a Breitling Navitimer except it's uh, sin. Uh, I believe the Navitimers do not have exhibition case backs, while this sin does feature an exhibition case back. Honestly, I think this sin is very beautiful. Hopefully I'll have a picture of the blue dial version with a uh, brown leather strap over, uh, over here for you guys. That is what kind of made me fall in love with the whole design element uh, of this watch. And even the Breitling Navitimer, you know, seeing the sin on brown leather makes me think, oh wow, what could the Breitling look like on uh, brown leather? So I do hope that you guys did enjoy this video. I know that there have been a lot of, uh, 
like alternative, <laughs> like that's what I call them, alternative videos on the channel. So if you do like these types of videos, definitely let me know in the comment section down below and I will uh, keep making them. Otherwise, if you guys have suggestions on what you would like to see next, please let me know in the comment section down below and I will do my best <laughs> to make it somewhat entertaining and uh, interesting. So as always, my name is Josh and I would like to thank you for watching. Oh gosh, thanks for watching. <laughs> I'll see you next time, bye.